Welcome back, everybody, to the channel. It's Raul Alejandro Mendoza, or the Nerd Chicano. Either way, how you say it, it's all good here. And we're back for another video today. And today, uh, this is something different. Um, I didn't really want to, don't really want to talk a lot about new films on the channel, you know, because I already either write about them on the nerdcore.com or I talk about them on the nerdcore podcast. And, you know, I, I do reviews so much of new films, so like, I don't really like doing like the same review three times or four times now. Um, I, don't, I don't mind going on, new pod on podcasts that I'm, my friends make or other people want me to come on to talk about the film. But like when it comes to my own personal content, I like to kind of stick to like, you know, one place gets my review and that's it. But there's always going to be an exception. And sometimes those exceptions are going to land here on this channel. And today is one of those exceptions. Uh, we've been waiting long, a very long time now for Matt Reeves' The Batman to drop. And that's why today I'm bringing you a review of Matt Reeves' The Batman as it has finally hit theaters this weekend of March 4th, 2022. So The Batman is uh, directed by Matt Reeves. Uh, you may know Matt Reeves from Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes. Or you may even know him from before that, when he directed Cloverfield, the found footage movie that, you know, would start off that Cloverfield franchise. Uh, Matt Reeves took over directing duties from Ben Affleck when Ben Affleck stu 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 stepped away from the, from, the, from the director's chair and then um, stu stu stepped away from the actor role as well. And my, Robert Panson was cast as our next Cape Crusader. We also have Zoe Kravitz playing Selena Kyle, aka Catwoman. We have Jeffrey Wright as Lieutenant James Gordon, Colin Farrell as um, Oswald Cobblepot, uh, the, the Penguin, Paul Dano as our the Riddler, and John Tortoro as Carmine Falcone, Andy Serkis as Alfred, and the list goes on and on. And of course, this is our next installment in the DC Films franchise, but don't get it twisted. This is not part of the DC Extended Universe. This is explained as being its own separate thing and being its own Bat Universe. And we see that because the plan apparently is for two other films going forward and some HBO Max spin-off series, including a Penguin, fran Penguin series and a GCPD, uh, Gotham City Police Department series, and also apparently a rumored Arkham Asylum series. Of course, uh, this film finally comes after two release uh, delays because of the COVID, COVID pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, and also delays in filming from the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's finally here. And what are my thoughts? I love this movie. I loved Matt Reeves' The Batman, and I think that if you knew me and you, you've known me and you know that like what I've been saying on the podcast for so long, ever since, honestly, ever since Matt Reeves was brought onto the project and he gave that one little interview where he was kind of like talking a little bit about, you know, what War, of the Planet of the, War for the Planet of the Apes meant for him with Caesar. And they asked him a little bit of like, what was his plan for Batman when these early writing stages and Matt Reeves said that he was planning to create this, you know, detective noir film in the style of Alfred Hitchcock. And he said how nobody has ever really, you know, explored the detective side of Batman. And he wanted to get that. And then, of course, fast forward when we got that fandom teaser trailer with some minimum footage that was barely shot before production was halted because of the pandemic. And then we fast forward from there, we finally get our first trailer. So hype has been building up for this. And I knew that this movie was in the best of hands because every single time that Matt Reeves opened that mouth, he knew what he was talking about. He knew what he was doing with Batman. And I love this movie. I think that Robert Pattinson does an incredible job as Batman, as Bruce Wayne. I think that he might possibly be my favorite Batman now. And Zoe Kravitz does a great job as well, Selena Kyle and Catwoman. Honestly, being my favorite Catwoman as well. I was a big, I was a fan of uh, of uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and uh, Anne Hathaway 
in their respective films. But I think Selena Kyle in this film, played by Zoe Kravitz, really brings out her own taste to it. And she really gives us a glimpse at her own interpretation of Catwoman. We also have some great performances, not just by Jeffrey Wright as Lieutenant James Gordon and, her, and his relationship with Batman in here, because Barb Pattinson and Jeffrey Wright have a great chemistry together, but Colin Farrell, John Torturo, Andy Serkis, but it's uh, play great, great respective characters, but it is really Paul Dano's The Riddler that shines for me in this film. His, ha his haunting performance and a very, very, very interesting commentary on extremism and radicalization within the world takes a takes a nice spin at this film and I think that the writing is so strong here and the, the, the script is, is, is strong I don't think it's a perfect film but I think that it hits its beats really well which ends up making for a great uh, film and a, a very very interesting interpretation of the Dark Knight himself other things that I really enjoyed, I loved Greg, Fra uh, Greg Frazier's uh, cinematography. As always, you know, Greg Frazier has been building a repertoire of excellence. I mean, Dune, uh, Rogue One. He really has built a beautiful, beautiful uh, catalog of films. And the Batman is nothing short. His cinematography is excellent as we keep to this very grim vision of Gotham. And we have very a very muted palette of colors and the lighting really stuck through and I think that it services well its story. And uh, I thought that that was what was done so well within the film when it comes to the cinematography department. And of course, we can't end this without talking about Michael Giacchino's incredible score. I mean, tremendous work from Michael Giacchino. Ever from the, for, from the first note, it really builds up and it crescendos into an incredible score from him. And it's no surprise, we've already known that Michael Giacchino is such a great composer, but he really goes all out with this one. I mean, he makes a Batman score that truly feels epic. And that's a word that I don't use a lot when it comes to scores, but this feels epic. Now, um, I have my gripes here and there. I don't think it's a perfect film. It gets really close, to be honest. I, I think that the pacing, is really good. I, I think that its pacing works really well for itself. Uh, those three hours, honestly, they don't go by fast. They don't go by slowly. I think that they go just right. Uh, there are things that where I was like, oh, I, I, I wish they would have, you know, kind of strengthened here a little more, you know, like, you know, the, the, the instances with, with Alfred, I, I really wish we could have gotten a little more of that you know, tender relationship between Alfred and and, and, uh, and Bruce, but I think that we truly, truly, truly were concentrating on the rebirth of Batman here. And really, because we are in the second year of Batman being the Batman, and there isn't really time to concentrate on Bruce. And I think that at the end, we truly get that glimpse into where we'll be going into the next films, where I think we'll really start to concentrate on the both sides of who he is in the side of Bruce and the side of Batman. So I thought that the film was well done and it is one that I was definitely looking forward to and I'm glad that it lived up to even more of its expectations. I mean, it, it lives up to, to much more than I ever thought we would get. And this is truly a beautiful noir detective film and I think that this is one of the best comic book films, but this is definitely the best Batman film to be made so far. Of course, if you want to stay connected with me, you can go ahead and follow me on all social medias. You can go ahead and go to Twitter and Instagram at The Nerd Chicano. Letterboxd, you can find me at The Nerd Chicano and also on Serialized on The Nerd Chicano. I also stream on Twitch sometime at twitch.tv slash The Nerd Chicano. And also, you can check out all the stuff that I do with The Nerdcore by going to thenerdcore.com. Check out all those, all those articles that I write and also check out the podcast by going to anchor.fm slash nerdcore, youtube.com slash nerdcore, twitch.tv slash the nerdcore. All that wonderful stuff, you can all find that stuff on the description below. But specifically, I want you to go ahead and subscribe and like this video. Turn on that notification bell so that way you can get a notification every time I get some new content up on this site, on this, on this channel. And uh, yeah, that's... Probably the most important thing you can do right now, please subscribe because I have 100 followers. I get my uh, 100 subscribers, I get my custom URL, and we're really close, guys. So, thank you for almost getting me there now. 
we're, we're closer than we were two videos before and that is a huge step so please keep subscribing guys because i really want my custom url and of course it has been a wonderful time being able to talk to you all and we'll see when we come back for another one of these reviews but remember my renowned cinephiles and scholars celebrate the love of cinema today tomorrow and every day after i'll catch you all on the next one